Jefferson County Public Health now celebrating 60 years of watching over the population it serves. An agency that began with only 24 employees now employs a small army of health workers protecting against disease, raising public awareness, enforcing standards on those who would harm the public good. Hello everyone and welcome to The Conversation. Today a look at a vital organization that usually works very quietly supporting the health and well-being of the thousands who live and work and play in Jefferson County. They are constantly vigilant and virtually invisible until something goes terribly wrong, usually in the food supply. JCPH, Jefferson County Public Health, now celebrating a significant milestone. Here is a look at their mission. Jefferson County is an amazing place to live, work, and play. But within the county, residents experience health issues in varying fashion. Access to healthy food, safe housing, transportation, education, health care, and other social and economic factors, such as race and poverty, impact each individual's health differently. These are called the social determinants of health, and they are often out of our personal control. We can all achieve the best health possible, but first, we need to reduce health inequities. Jefferson County Public Health works towards this through high quality public health services focused on preventing health problems before they start. For example, administration and governance help maintain important public health programs and resources through laws, policies, and procedures. Communicable disease prevention, investigation, and control keeps residents safe, protecting them from emerging diseases and outbreaks. Emergency preparedness and response keeps our communities resilient when disasters strike. Environmental health maintains the safety of our air, land, and water, and the food we eat. Assessment and planning help define health priorities in the county and where public health services can make a difference. Communications maintains accountability, trust, and transparency with the general public. Prevention and population health promotion gives us all a chance to live healthier lives through policies, programs, and health education. Vital records and statistics keeps track of and issues documentation for some of life's biggest moments such as birth and death certificates. By addressing the social determinants of health and focusing on health prevention, health workers create a healthier living space for everyone. Jefferson County Public Health says it is proud to serve Jeffco residents for 60 years and counting. A wonderful agency, well managed, everything they do well executed for the last 60 years. Our guest today, Jefferson County Public Health Executive Director, Dr. Mark Johnson. Doctor, thanks for coming today. To his left, Melissa Pillay, Associate Director of Family Services. Jenna Metzinger, Healthy Food Access Coordinator. You're also the, tea, uh, the uh, Tobacco Prevention Specialist, so we'll have to talk about vaping today, which is uh, such a big topic in the news right now. And Jessa Woodward, the Environmental Health Services Supervisor. Welcome to all of you. Did you all come over on the Health Department bus this morning? Is that how, do you all travel together? <laughs> no, I know that you don't. I know that you were delivered in a Prius, so how yes. appropriate for the oh, health yeah, department Prius. for yes. that. Dr. Johnson, this is uh, uh, one of those organi organizations, as I said, that's virtually invisible uh, until some big health problem uh, jumps up. And 60 years ago, there were only 24 people, of course, Jefferson County a lot smaller then, but only 24 people managing that. How many people are you now? And just give me a small idea of your footprint in the community. We have 182 staff members now. Not all of them are full-time, but 182 folks, and we work from everything from cradle to grave. We, we basically say that we have prenatal programs, we have maternal and child health care programs, we have some clinical programs, we have a number of environmental health programs, both dealing with how does the environment impact our health as well as how do we impact the health of the environment. We have health education programs, we have vital records programs, keeping track of births and deaths and and then an epidemiology and emergency preparedness program keeping track of what are the diseases and the conditions that are passing through the community. And the biggest difference between us and other healthcare is they usually focus on one individual and treatment. We focus on a whole population right. and prevention. That's right. And, and people should know that 
uh, the, the department is in great hands. You're very, you're a very experienced practitioner. How long have you been with Jefferson County Health? I've been 29 years. 29 for, years, for so a longtime player. So, yeah. I, I think longevity is one of those things that always speaks well for a department. You know, good for you. Well, thank you. And Melissa, we, uh, we just we mentioned uh, uh, prenatal health care and child care, and actually, you guys have a fairly new program for new moms. Healthy Start. Do I have that right? Healthy Start at Home. Healthy Start at Home, and that is that is a program for pregnant women, um, any woman in Jefferson County, regardless of her income or insurance status, and we do nurse home visitation. So. We have been doing nurse home visitation at Jefferson County Public Health, I think since like the 1980s, probably even before that, but through funding through the Medicaid office. And over the last few years since I've been with the department, we were noticing that we were getting all of these referrals through our referral sources that we couldn't serve because the women didn't have Medicaid. They had CHP Plus, which is another form of Medicaid, but it's not regular Medicaid, or they didn't have insurance at all. So we, we really knew that there was a pocket of women in our county that we weren't working with and we had this evidence-based program that reduces preterm birth and low and the incidence of low birth weight and we weren't um, able to provide that to everyone who could benefit so we expanded I think in October of this last year so it's only been a few months to who we can serve we also expanded the length of time we can work with women oh, so the program used to end at eight weeks postpartum but we know that children are changing and growing and parents have a lot of questions beyond that and we know that women stop breastfeeding for a lot of different barriers well before we would like them to. So we wanted to really remain with families and help them through those difficult times. So young mothers need to know that you're there and they can get, <laughs> get a hold of you online and over the phone yep. both ways. So it's, uh, we were, Dr. Johnson and I were talking Jefferson County, uh, at currently the oldest uh, well, I should, in terms of senior population mm -hmm. and age, the oldest uh, county uh, in the state. But at one time, Dr. Johnson says, mm -hmm. it was actually uh, a 50-50 split. So we know that there's still a lot of young moms out I there. I know the, the local hospitals do a lot of care on the other end for mm -hmm. seniors, uh, a lot of uh, post-operative programs mm -hmm. to get them home and get them back mm -hmm. on their feet again. And uh, it's great to know that there's also programs out there for people on the other end of the spectrum. Yep, and that's just one of our home visitation programs. We have quite a few that work with families across all age spans. Good for you. Well, really important, and it's a good, good space for the health department to be in. Uh, Jen, I wanted to ask you about uh, food insecurity. Uh, I know that 12% uh, now, and this is a figure uh, from NBC News, 12% of U.S. households are food insecure. I mean, almost mm -hmm. one out of 10. That takes my breath away. And they supplied another figure that in the U.S., we waste 72 billion pounds of food every year. That's an, I mean, that's enough to take care of much of the third world. I mean, it's just an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. And I know that, it, that, that, is, that is a space for you and that's a place that you're working on and you're trying to lift profiles in that area. Absolutely. So we have a food policy council at Jefferson County Public Health that's working on these issues, um, trying to tackle food insecurity. Um, hunger is a silent problem, so we don't always know who's experiencing it and where and when. So it's good to provide services and make sure that everybody knows about them. So our food policy council really tries to connect those who need food and definitely healthy food with farmers who are producing food in Jefferson County. Ah, I see. Yeah, urban farmers are very underutilized, I feel like, and we have almost 50 in Jefferson County. So Oh, really? Yeah, we And they are they part of they're part of your program. The farmers are I mean, you can you can identify an ant need family and then you can ask these farmers to step in to help. Oftentimes, if people come and connect with farmers, they always have excess produce oh, and right. are willing to give it. And we also have great programs like Double Up Food Bucks, which allows those who are on SNAP um, and sometimes WIC, um, we're working on that in Jefferson County, getting WIC involved, but those who are on SNAP, which is otherwise known as food stamps, um, can purchase locally grown produce at farmer's markets with their benefits and then get extra fruits and vegetables. Wow, great program. Yeah. How do you go about identifying a nutritionally challenged home. I would think that that would be a difficult step. How do you know who's who? Yeah, that's that's something that we struggle with. And I, I would say that we often need people to be seeking help. So we try to meet them where they're at, you know, put resources out at food banks, um, make sure that at our, all of our WIC clinics, every single program that we have is connected. Um, something else that we do is put on a bunch of events. So last week we actually had an event called um, Health from the Ground Up, Meet Your Local Farmer. Uh -huh. And we did outreach at Human Services and with our WIC clinics and the general population to try and connect people with their urban farmers. Great idea. To know where to find food and 
farms are such a great place for people to not only get a reliable source of food, but healthy, nutritious food. So if you're out there and you're, you're not feeling really secure about your food situation, if you're challenged, then somebody needs to call the health department and you have a lot of assistance for them. Absolutely. Good for you. That would be great. And then uh, I was telling, Jess, I was telling you that as a young reporter, uh, I made a living off of uh, uh, health department uh, 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 restaurant inspection reports. People are always astonished to know that the favorite place that they eat at has, has a lot of problems in the kitchen. Uh, and usually I found it seemed it was a lot of the, the busier places or the more popular places because they were so busy uh, that they weren't paying attention to temperature and uh, uh, rodent and insect control and all the things that are so important. People find it absolutely <laughs> stunning and disgusting when they, do, you know, when they discover that a place that they love to eat uh, uh, has those problems. And that's, that's one of your areas and you're very vigilant. You guys watch it very closely. We do, and in addition to restaurants in Jefferson County, we license um, coffee shops and temporary food vendors, food trucks, fairs, festivals, and all in all, we have about a little over 2,000 retail food establishments within the county that we license. Really? That yeah. many? I know that the food truck thing is, uh, is so popular mm -hmm. anymore, and the, the, really the food is delicious, uh, but, but you know, is that a particularly hard area uh, to control in terms of all the health measures they have to take or do they do a pretty good job in general? They do a pretty good job. We, we require them to come in every year to get licensed and so we do see every single food truck within Jefferson County that we license so we want to ensure that they are providing safe food for all their customers. You know, uh, Dr. Johnson, I, 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 we were talking about uh, surveys done uh, uh, for uh, um, uh, most particularly targeting consumers and asking them what it is they're most concerned about and food safety is at, always at the top of the list. And this is such a big, uh, our, just the entire front range, so many, 2,000 restaurants just in Jefferson County, I mean, and thousands of additional restaurants along the front range. Uh, people are really concerned about uh, things like, well, the romaine lettuce scare was, was a big one just recently. And so, so many people, uh, for example, Costco took back thousands of bags of lettuce before even Costco was aware of what is going on. But sometimes that's a, di a difficult thing to get the word out so that pe you know, people are always telling me they want a better mechanism to know if there's a problem somewhere. And that's a, that's a big hurdle for a health department. It's a huge hurdle for a health department and much of that work is actually done at the federal level because food has moved so much around the country and actually from outside the country quite often so that particularly like with the romaine lettuce, what the, what the federal government does is they step in immediately and then stop the, the use of romaine lettuce. You may remember they said, don't use any, any romaine all, lettuce. Throw it all out. And right. then they were able to track it down and figure out which farms or which area it came from. It came from a place in California. And then they could say, okay, it's all right to use the romaine lettuce, just don't use this. So some particularly in the, in the that are merchandising those foods are a little upset that everything gets stopped, but really for the health of the people, you have to stop everything until you can figure out what's really causing this and where are the, where are the sources of the problem. And um, I think it's, it's the better part of valor to make sure that the pe population is safe instead of saying, let's, let's just keep eating the romaine and try to figure out where people are getting sick. Yeah, good program. It seems to me that most retailers are pretty good about removing items from the shelf. Are, are you the follow-up guys for something like that? Or uh, you know, how, how, who, who, where, how does that work when uh, there, a food emergency has been declared? Who's responsible for going in and saying, uh, did you know that this is not safe to eat and you should have had it yeah. off your shelves? I mean, is that you guys or is that somebody else? It, it's a shared responsibility. Like I said, the feds usually take the lead on something like that. They work very closely with the states. The states work very closely with the local health departments and we all work together so that the, the, the state does not have the resources to go in and check to see if the, if the lettuce has been removed. So our inspectors, when they're out inspecting, will look for things like that. But it's a, it's a real team uh, project from the feds, the state, and the locals working on things like that. I know you have a, you have a great staff, all these, all these uh, bright, hardworking people, but I often wonder, Melissa, say for example, uh, the resources for uh, your area. Uh, do, do you find that uh, I've, the health workers that I've covered over the years, they, they, they were so, I mean, they worked long days, they were very dedicated, but they were some of the most uh, beat up uh, workers, public workers, uh, in the public arena because, well, st you guys have a great staff, but you have a big area to cover mm -hmm. still. Do you feel challenged in addressing all the areas uh, in your purview? 
I think we feel challenged. Jefferson County is a really large county and it's very diverse, which people may not realize. And so our nurse home visitors are seeing families in the mountains or seeing families in urban areas. And those are different challenges for those families. And so that is really hard for sometimes our staff to know how to best respond to. And I do think, um, especially in nurse home visitation, a lot of what we're seeing has to do with substance use and mental health issues. And that just inherently takes a toll on our staff. We do a lot to try and support one another and support our nurses. So we have mental health embedded in our teams, not just for our families, but for our nurses Yourselves too. Well, mm -hmm. right? yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's it's a big change for maybe what you were talking about in the past, but it's something we're very conscious of. Yeah. I have, a, my daughter is a health worker, and I know mm -hmm. it just impacts her tremendously, some of the things that mm -hmm. they see and deal with. You know, it's often a very difficult thing. Yes. Uh, which brings me uh, to vaping. I told you I wanted to talk about vaping, so I was driving in today. Uh, uh, seems to be, it seems to be uh, a large problem right now for a, for a lot of younger people. This morning, driving in a, a car full of younger people, and everyone looks younger to me, so I can't tell you how old they were, but, but there were four people in the car, and the smoke was just rolling out of the car. It seems you see this increasingly, and it seems to be increasingly popular with young teens, particularly, mm -hmm. and I would think that would be a big issue for you. Yes, it definitely is. Um, nationwide, um, youth vaping rates are at about 13%, and in Jefferson County, our youth vaping rate is at 30%. So almost two, more than two times the amount of the national average. So we really are seeing a huge issue here. We also have a lot of health inequities around tobacco use in general. So those who are low socioeconomic status, um, lower income, um, lower education levels are disproportionately affected by tobacco use in general. Yeah. So um, I think families and parents and just trusted adults in general need to know the facts. And there's actually a great website um, called Tobacco Free Colorado forward slash know the facts. Um, shameless plug there. Um, <laughs> where people can learn not only about what the new vaping devices look like, but tobacco products in general. There's always new things coming out. Yeah. Um, know the health effects before they talk to young people about vaping. So I think it's important to talk to young people honestly and to understand why they might be vaping. Um, a lot of times we're hearing it's because of stress. Um, or other factors. So really understanding those root causes of vaping, I think, right. will be really important for our adults when reaching out to young people. A lot of those high school kids we talked to, it's just like when we, I was in high school a lot longer, that smoking was, was the thing when I was a kid in high school. But you talk to these kids in high school and it's the cool, dangerous, edgy thing uh, to do. It just seems to be one of those peer things that uh, so many of them adopted and, and, uh, you know, th and then uh, develop as a habit. Well, and a lot of them, I think, don't understand how much nicotine is in them. I mean, one Juul pod, so there's a, a little vape thing called a Juul, J-U-U-L, and it looks like a flash drive, and one pod actually has a whole cigarettes, a whole pack of oh, cigarettes really? worth of nicotine oh. in one. So there is a nicotine high on the Yes, product, there so. is, and we're hearing from a lot of students that they're using more than one a day. Yeah. So it's can be very difficult to talk to them and make sure they know it's not just harmless water vapor. Right. Another challenge for the for the health department. Mm -hmm. uh, Jess, I want to know how does environmental health fit into public health? Because I know that uh, now environmental health is kind of a, well, not a brand new frontier, but an expanding frontier for a lot of health departments. Yes, environmental health focuses on the relationship between environmental changes and the human impact. Environmental changes may be natural or man-made. So, and those would affect the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the land that we live on, and the food that we eat. So there is a direct tie, a direct correlation between, I know, uh, uh, does environment include the brown cloud? Is that, I mean, that's a much, I mean, that's a huge issue. Uh, I, I would think all health departments maybe are looking at that in some respect, but I know coming in this morning, the brown cloud is very pronounced. And I know it's better around here, but it's still fairly prevalent. It is, and air quality is a concern. And we do have a, another shameless plug, uh, air quality <laughs> alerts on our Jefferson County Public Health website. <laughs> I know the, the health up. side is very robust. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, people have a lot of information at their disposal uh, if they just go there. I, I, I would think web development was a key component for you. I, I know that when, well, when you were probably a young health director, you didn't have a lot of access digitally. And I think that would have been a, a big leap for a health department, not being a, able to get information out. But the digital spectrum has really improved that for you. It's been a huge change. When I started at this job, we didn't have computers. Right. We started getting computers. <clears throat> then we got the Internet, and now we're beginning to learn 
I think the, the media got it first with doing restaurant inspection right. reports and things like that. Now everybody does, now and they're all copycats, does. all those ne'er-do-wells yes. out there following us, yeah. But we've learned that having the ability to, to have all of the information about our programs on there, some of the data as to what we're seeing, we had to do a community health assessment every three years so that people can go on and find out what is happening in Jefferson County as far as the health in Jefferson County. Um, so it's a very robust entity that we have, and we have staff that are just doing a great job of keeping it up to date. Yeah. How many people now that I ask you that already? How many 182. people? 182. 182. So mm -hmm. here you are. You're, you're managing communicable disease prevention, uh, emergency preparedness, environmental health, uh, prevention and population health promotion. I mean, the, the list is so long. Uh, going forward into this new year, uh, uh, what are you most excited about? What, what is your focus? I mean, besides all the areas that you're already monitoring, is there another horizon for you? One of the big horizons for me is that we actually are now working to get accredited as a health department. It's sort of a new thing that has just been around for the last five or six years, and it has made us become more efficient, more effective in the way we do things, more communication between our programs and with the community. And we are just in that very final step to seeing about getting accredited. So once we do that, I think the people of Jefferson County can feel good about the fact that we do have an accredited department and that we are doing everything we possibly can to be as efficient and effective with the resources that we do have. One of those uh, uh, public per uh, perception things, then, right. I would guess. And I know there's a lot of way besides uh, your uh, uh, prenatal care and postnatal care programs that you directly touch the communities, but uh, the community. But what is another way where you have this great w uh, opportunity for one-on-one -on -one contact with the residents of Jefferson County? So we have a clinic, and at our clinic we offer a wide range of services from immunizations to family planning, but one of the things that I think we're doing that is most exciting and really most meets the needs of our community is our Points West program. So we have a program where people who have substance use disorders can come in and get clean sterile equipment so that they can safely inject substances and it's a harm reduction model so our goal is really to hopefully be able to meet people where they are, make sure that they are not transmitting diseases, get them tested for HIV and hepatitis and then if they're interested in treatment refer them to treatment. So we know that substance use disorders are a really large issue not just in Jefferson County but in the metro area. And then in addition to that direct care we're doing a lot with community partners to try and reduce the burden of substance use disorders in our community. So um, working with providers to change their prescribing habits of opiates, for example. Is this a, this is just a 24-hour walk-in clinic? So No, it's not 24 hours, so it's Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. People don't have to have appointments. It's free. You can just walk on in. We also distribute naloxone, which is the overdose antidote. So right. there's a lot of education that goes on as part of this program as and well. And where is the clinic? It is at 645 Parfait in Lakewood. <laughs> Great question. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware there was a clinic, yep. but I know that's, a, that's another a big issue for mm -hmm. a lot of consumers, especially those who are trying to deal with members of the family who have different health issues and they're trying to get them some help. Right. You know, some, and usually some immediate and fairly inexpensive mm -hmm. help, so that's a good way to go. Yes. Is marijuana a big player in, in well, I, I can imagine it's not a, a player to some extent in our community in terms of public health and well-being. It absolutely is. Um, we actually have a specific grant that's working on that. It's called the Communities That Care Grant. Um, that kind of partners with mm -hmm. you know, the great work that the clinic is doing um, on substance use prevention um, and at a systematic level. So we do have a grant that's specifically working on that. Um, the Tobacco Prevention Initiative supports those efforts um, just in terms of you know, the vaping um, and tobacco use in general, but we do see a lot of co-occurring use with vapes, um, with nicotine, right. Right. Um, tobacco and then with marijuana as well so yeah. they definitely all all are related and all impact the other. Jessica this this county um, offers some special challenges as Dr. Johnson mentioned it's you know it's very spread out there's mm -hmm. all kinds of terrain all kinds of uh, living situations do you find those special and unique challenges for what you're trying to do as a health worker? I think the the main difference you know the humans are the same whether we're in the mountains or in the city however us th that live in the mountains, we have our own individual challenges because we are our own water and sewer systems. As a homeowner in the mountains, you're required to maintain your own septic system and you need to be mindful of what you're putting down your system and how often you're pumping it and taking care of that and really feeding back into the mountain groundwater. And then also you um, 
have your own well that you want to be testing and making sure that you are drinking safe water at your home. So we do have courier service from the health department to the state lab where we provide well testing and we also do uh, septic inspections. At no the, kidding, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The health department it is so busy. Every time you guys yeah. answer a question, you open up another area yeah. that you're involved in. Is there enough staff and money for all of this, Dr. Johnson? I mean, I'm, I mean, I said you have an army of all your all your all your employees are saying no, <laughs> uh, but I, I mentioned. Um, uh, you mentioned that you have a lot of ground to cover, uh, that it's a very robust thing. It's uh, often a lot of uh, territory just geographically to cover. So do, are, even though you have 182 people, do you have, a, have enough? I said it was an army of health workers, but maybe the army is too small. I think when you get west of the Mississippi, health departments tend to be smaller than they are in the east. Really? And, and what that limits is we end up doing a lot of things reactively so that we react to problems in restaurants or in the water, those kinds of things. Instead of being able to have the luxury of doing some proactive studies going out and seeing what, what is going on at the water systems and those kinds of things. Also, you mentioned that we have some of the older population. We would love to be able to expand our programs for injury control in the elderly and for medication use in the elderly, some of those kinds of things going into the homes and helping them fix them so that they don't have loose rugs and things like that. So there's, there's areas in almost everything we do where we could be more proactive, where we really could be doing more if we had more funding, but we also realize we live in an area where people tend to not like government and they want to keep things independent as much as possible. But yes, we could be doing much more if we had the funds. And as I said, uh, the health department is one of those entities that you really don't know a lot about and you may have preconceived notions about them until something unexpectedly <laughs> goes horribly wrong and then everybody loves the health department. Thank goodness the health department is here. You, do you, you feel much the same? Would you? I, I can't imagine everyone, particularly in your area, wouldn't want more money and more staff that, that you don't have needs. Yes, yes. <laughs> the, yes. Boss, the boss is sitting here. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. He knows that you know that everybody probably can use five or six extra hands, particularly doing all the things that you guys do. Absolutely, and yeah. I would echo what Dr. Johnson said that we try to be proactive and preventative. But a lot of what we're doing is possibly touching just the highest risk members of our community when we're doing direct services. And if we had more funding, more staff, we might be able to do more really basic prevention work. Um, when it comes to substance abuse um, and mental health, that would be an area where we could really do a lot more to sh build up strength and strengthen protective factors and not be reacting. Right. I know the schools are uh, all focused now, particularly with in the latest bond issue, uh, which was wildly mm -hmm. successful in Jefferson County. There really, there's a new focus on mental health mm -hmm. uh, for, for students and uh, maybe that's one of those uh, one of those things that health departments could branch out to, and not just for, for kids and young people, but for seniors as well. Well, you guys, that's a fascinating perspective on what you do. It's hard to put it all in in 30 minutes, but Dr. Johnson, thank you very much for, you. for being here and bringing your staff. Melissa, thank you as well. Uh, the Associate Director of Family Services uh, is, uh, has a, uh, uh, a big, uh, big plate to fill, it sounds to me, a, a lot of interesting <laughs> things. Jenna, thank you as well, and uh, we'll continue to follow restaurant reviews. It's one of our favorite things to do, as you know. <laughs> and Jessa, you as well, Environmental Health uh, Services Supervisor, thanks for all you do. Thanks for, uh, for everything that you do for our community and the hard work and vigilance that you are uh, involved in every day. Thanks all for being here today. Thank, thank you. you. And thanks to all of you. Great good luck, uh, by the way, on your next 60 years, I should say. And thanks to all of you for joining us. And we will talk again soon.